Lads, it's been a while, I hope you're well. So some of the boys in my Discord came across some of the concept or like the early ideas for Alchemy Stars. So shout out to Frost Joke, Silver, and all the other boys, you know who you are. And on that note, small plug for my Discord, you know what it is, it's down in the description below. But essentially what we have are a bunch of different story panels as well as the early combat systems, a lot of the early systems, and the art. And so my lads, today I want to go through all of these, it's not actually just contained there. As you can see, we've got even more in the web browser. Browser. And so today, let's go through all of that content, and with that being said, hi! Welcome back to my channel, my name is Lace, and let's just jump right into the content. So let's start off with what Frostjerk is calling their story and proposal to Tencent. So this is when your boys tour dog, they were like, oh, hey Tencent, do you want to be the publisher for our game? And so here is the first storyboard, I'm just going to run through all of them with you and give my thoughts. The subtitles say, Family Spirit, which drives elements and possesses different abilities, is a pure spiritual body, different from human beings. As you can see in the image, we have Nikki, we have Nemesis, in the photo here. So what we do know now is that they actually predate the current version of Alchemy Stars. And so the next storyboard we have yet beside them, beside the spiritual beings, we have another kind that is called the Aki. And to be honest, like this looks like the current true order, like with their kind of a little bit grotesque, demonic kind of feel like this. It could be an early concept for Victoria that we know today. So here we've got Aki. Moving on next, these three races once shed their blood dividing the world. So we've got the Aki, we've got the spiritual beings as well as the humans. And then the humans and the co-spirits built an alliance to survive. So it really actually sounds like if you guys have seen something like Shaman King or Bleach, very much like a human and a co-spirit partner relationship. Co-spiriters, those who could bond their souls with spirits, once repulsed Aki and saved our home. And so now, with the five cities remained, the second war may revive from the wasteland or the academy. That one is a little bit iffy, but like from what I can tell, the current system in which we have like the uh, Northland and we have Redis Wrench, like Illumina, I think previously in these early 2019 concepts, it was actually the concepts of schools rather than factions. The world still needs co-spiriters, said that man, and co-spiriters still need this academy. And I don't know about you guys, but like this cube is remarkably familiar. I don't know where I've seen it before. I'm just saying it looks really, really familiar. And so here we have a very, very early concepts of Eve and potentially Sinsa. Judging from this photo, like either this was old Sinsa or it is like a completely different character. But like you see that freaking hairstyle he got going on there, man, that is like almost 99% 99. So much freaking certainty that that is Sinsa. However, on the other hand, we've got Eve over here and there is almost no doubt that Eve is evil because of this robotic arm over here. And so this is the last slide of all of the concept storyboard. I will leave this translation to you. But essentially, there are a couple of things here that still make me feel like it's Sinsa. All right, and so that wraps up the early concept of the storyboard. Let's look into some of the other content. Next up, what I have here is a bunch of essentially like the systems and some of like the tutorial, like the images that they post on the Twitter before it actually gets in game. Kind of like previews, right? And so so to kick things off, we have this one over here. And as you can see, we've got Eve with the robotic arm. And so I do believe that this is like a red faction. But aside from Eve herself, I actually don't recognize any of these characters. Let's move on to the next slide. And here is where it gets interesting. On the left hand side, you see this smug looking brown head, monkey looking, I don't know. Many other terms I could use to describe this guy, but in fact, this is our navigator. It's honestly pretty funny how different this navigator is like compared to our one today. Like our one today is like, he's kind of a wimp. But this guy is like smug af. He would steal your girl and then he would tell you to apologize. Anyway, on this image, you will see a few more familiar faces. Uh, probably, I think he's hidden back there. But essentially, we've got Kuma and Pengi in the background. All right, so moving on, we have these two characters. I'm going to be honest, I don't 100% understand what's going on here. I think they are two doctors from two different factions, but do not quote me on that. But like I said before, I do think that this guy is Sinsa. And man, as an old man, he's kind of like devilish handsome. And so moving through next, we've got, okay, this is where it gets real freaking crazy because it's essentially Tomb World. Like Maximilian Pegasus just played Tomb World and everyone just got transformed into cartoons. So as you can see, a lot of the base systems are actually the same as what we have in today's Alchemy Stars. You're going to be walking along the tiles, you're going to be hitting some enemies, and we have the same fire, forest, thunder, water element interaction. However, like I said, the art style of this is like almost completely different. It's, it's very much much like related you can be like oh man this could be some fan art but it looks like a completely different game and so if I go forward 
I'm honestly not sure what this one is. Maybe this one is actually like what turned into Northland, a country of fairy tales. An interesting one, but I think this is still concept art, but this is kind of what I wanted to show you. So this one over here, we've got Castor Pollux and we've got them running along the green as well as the blue tiles, like conceptually from the point of view of like the game, the core game mechanics, it is the same. And what this page itself is trying to demonstrate to us is that there are dual elements where this character, Castor Pollux, are blue and green and they can run on both blue and green. And so moving on, next we've got, okay, this is the screen that I really wanted to show you because this is what really made me feel like, well, this is like Tomb World. We've got all these characters over here. You can see Luis, the old Luis, which is actually, she's kind of the same Luis. Old mate Kuma Pengi were an SSR and they got freaking demoted to a five star. I don't know, man, that seems kind of... Kind of freaking cringe. But yeah, looking at this interface, like it is very much like an arcade or it's very much like an old school cartoon game. Like I could totally see myself playing this as if it was like Mega Man or something, right? And so the other thing that you'll notice about this is that there are only four party slots. And on the far left, we have our own navigator. So what it looks like is from a conceptual point of view, the navigator was actually part of the party. And I will show you that in a second. But on top of that, there is also a weapon over here. However, I must admit, I'm not sure what these two would be, maybe like skills or something. But then looking below, you can also change weapons up here. Okay, so moving on, this is the change weapon screen. And I suspect we've got some like weapon skills down here. However, looking at this at a quick glance, it's kind of sounding a bit complex. My interpretation of this is five, six, eight, nine. I think it's like you need to run on either five red squares or six green squares or la -di -da -di -da, up to nine blue squares to be able to trigger this effect. My guys, that is just my guess. I don't know if that is actually how it works. And so moving on, we have a boss battle with Eve, I think. It kind of looks like Eve over there. And so this looks like our combat screen. It's very close to it where we've got our party members down here and then a leader kind of at the top. However, like for us today, it's switch leader. And as you can see, we have our smuggy protagonist down here on the field and he is leading the battle. Quite a different concept to what we have today. Our navigator is just like sitting in the back line. He's just freaking chilling and he's just like, all right, um, night to B3. And so my dudes, with that, that is the end of the systems itself. And so the last thing I want to show you guys is actually the art style. Because clearly at some point, there was like a massive change in direction for the art style, right? So we have Nikki over here and it's like she's not fully developed. And before you guys take this as criticism, like it's more that I understand, I respect that this might've just been like early concepts. But I do want to compare this to today's Nikki. Like it looks completely different, right? There is so much detail that the shading is just on point. It just looks a lot more professional. And so comparing old Nikki to new Nikki, you can kind of see why I am calling the old Nikki like kind of like Toontown, right? All right. And so after that, I do have one last thing to show you guys. And it's just like, it's kind of like a concept of card systems, but essentially we have a whole bunch of different characters here that are using like the older art form. We've got like a butler looking dude or even like a casino dealer. He's using hands and he's got a, he's got a king looking guy behind him with a giant sword. Unfortunately, my guys, I am not even going to try to pronounce this name like Nord or oh, yeah I'm, I'm gonna stop trying and so old mate is a five star fire unit now coming down we have a familiar face nemesis however was she called nemesis in her old days oh she was she was nemesis she was a five star and she was a thunder unit indeed looks like she had a very little changing all right moving on who have we got next uh oh we got Faust okay we'll see if Faust is still called Faust and a fire five star uh-huh. Relia Howard. Five star fire. Okay. He is still like as we know him in Faust in terms of his archetype, but but what the frick? <laughs> and so moving on, we've got oh, we've got the two that we saw, Castor and Pollux, who are going to be water and forest five stars. Pretty sick design. However, I feel like back in the day, they really, really emphasize like the dual element. Whereas these days, it's kind of like, well, who has a logical dual element? Like we've got Midgard, who is forest and fire, etc., etc. And so moving through, we have Nikki. Let's see if she was always Nikki and always a forest and narcissist. Okay. I mean, it's pretty freaking close. And as for her rarity, five star forest, I suspect, 
expect that five star was the highest rarity at the time. Like boys, I gotta admit, I kind of like this. Like it's almost like a chibi Nikki. However, just comparing like this to today's kind of art. Oh my God, like look at that freaking race queen. It is pretty obvious as to why they went with this kind of art style versus the older ones. However, again, I cannot discount the fact that this might have just been some concept art, like some early images they had always intended to go for something like this. All right, and so let's move on. And we got Luis. Is Luis going to be a five star? It is going to be Luis. Oh, looks like her last name is Carol, the Wonderland. Luis Carol with a five star on the forest element. She actually looks almost identical to what we have right now. And so moving through, moving through, we've got Erato. I feel like I've seen this character. I feel like I've seen her quite a fair bit. However, my guys, I cannot remember where I have seen her before. And so if you do know, let me down in the comments below, but let's move on. She is going to be a five-star water and she she certainly looks like it. Okay, and so next, 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 we have Kuma and Pengi and Benny and Penny. <laughs> what the? Why is his name Benny? Why Benny? I mean, I'm gonna assume that this guy is Benny and that guy is Penny. And maybe it's Benny because it's a bear and Penny because like it's a penguin. And so let's have a quick look and they are going to be a five-star water unit. Moving on, moving on. We've got a character I certainly have not seen before, but she looks like a water unit. Noir, okay. Unbreakable diamond. Maybe she is going to be an upcoming unit. Maybe she was transformed into something that we already have today. Or maybe she is going to be benched forever in the dark depths of the archives in Alchemy Star's basement back over in the Tour Dog Studios. However, boys, there is one thing that I did want to point out, and it's that in none of the content today, none of these conceptual arts, none of these like freaking battle systems and stuff, did we even see a mention of Vice or Carleen. And so I guess that means really they were actually really recent additions. And so with that small little observation, I am going to leave you guys with a secret question. What do you guys think about these early 2019 concepts of Alchemy Stars? If this was still the Mega Man looking game that it once was, would you still have played it? Or are you kind of relieved that they kind of like almost elevated their art style as well as their entire UI interface? My boys, let me know down in the comments below. And if you do end up leaving a comment, thank you guys so much. If you did enjoy this video, you already know the drill, like, subscribe, notification bells on. And so as Nikki once said, all good things must come to an end. Not her, apparently, she came through to the end game. So my boys, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.